Hey, I want to do another video, this time within Christianity and looking at different uh, denominations and beliefs within the label of Christianity. And, you know, it would seem simple that followers of uh, Jesus Christ who, um, you know, trusted the Bible would at least have uh, the same belief on salvation. Uh, but as we can see, there are uh, many man's doctrines that have crept in uh, within uh, different churches over time. And a lot of muddying the gospel, the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, where, as we saw in other world religions um, that are all works-based religions, um, this certainly has crept into uh, the Christian church since the beginning um, and um, you know the largest um, um, I guess group or, or church within Christianity would be Roman Catholicism and you know they don't hide it you know like it, at least I give them credit where they don't hide you know that it's a grace plus work salvation um, because a lot of uh, churches will uh, say it's by grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ, but then uh, will add works to the gospel in subtle ways, uh, uh, like lordship, salvation, repent of your sins, um, and requiring uh, different things of a church member of that denomination or sect or even cult. Um, but Roman Catholicism, uh, states that it's um, grace plus works. Uh, they'll look at James 2 and other verses within the Bible to uh, justify their beliefs that man is justified in the eyes of God um, through faith and works. And, um, you know, the works will include uh, keeping the sacraments, the Eucharist, uh, attending Mass, uh, repenting of sins, confession uh, to priests, um, being baptized is a huge one. That's why Catholics baptize their babies. They believe that that is a part of salvation. Uh, but they're not the only ones. Other, other groups do too. Uh, so I'm not just picking on Catholics. Uh, and again, this video is not to pick on Catholics. I love um, everybody I know that uh, are friends of mine that are Catholic. And I think a lot of I think a lot of my friends understand um, the Bible truly, and you know they continue uh, to go to Catholic churches because of tradition and and you know of family and and friends and community, and uh, hopefully they'll get their um, you know their uh, spiritual um, knowledge and wisdom and understanding through a weekly reading through. Um, at home and, and reading the Bible, um, you know, you're not you're not saved by attending or not attending the church. Uh, you're saved by faith in Jesus Christ, um, and and it is faith um, and trust in what Jesus Christ did, the gospel, the true gospel that He died for our sins according to Scripture, and was buried and rose again according to Scripture. Um, let's continue and we can look at, um, another religion within Christianity, Eastern Orthodox, very similar to, uh, Catholicism has 270 million people, uh, in the most current census I saw. And this is, uh, again, a... Uh, orthodoxy that interprets um, the Bible and, and uh, certain verses in Scripture in such a way that works become essential uh, to reach heaven and you know just like Catholicism and orthodoxy teaches that faith in Jesus is necessary for salvation but where Christianity teaches that becoming more Christ-like is a result of Christ's influence in a believer's life. Orthodoxy teaches that it is part of the salvation process. 
Um, anytime you hear the word process and salvation used in tandem, uh, run from whoever's teaching that uh, because salvation is not a process. Uh, it's a moment in time. It's your spiritual birthday. Once you place your faith uh, and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, that he died for you and uh, that you're a sinner and need a Savior and you put your trust in what he did on the cross. Um, but this salvation process in Eastern Orthodoxy called theosis, um, if not performed appropriately, then if they did have salvation, they could lose it. Um, and after death, similar to purgatory and Catholicism, um, the devout life is in an intermediate state and theosis then can be completed. Um, and those who have believed but did not accomplish sufficient progress in theosis are sent to a temporary direful condition and will go to hell unless the living devout pray and complete acts of mercy on their behalf. And after the final judgment, the devout are sent to heaven and the others to hell. Uh, heaven and hell are not locations but reactions to being in the presence of God as there is nowhere that he is not present. For Christ followers, God's presence is paradise, but for the unsaved, being with God is eternal torment. So, you know, again, it's it's a, a post-death purification. Um, the sufficiency of uh, the cross is not enough, even though, um, you know, it, it says that uh, Jesus died for um, is the propitiation for our sins and not of ours only, but sins for the whole world that um, his work on the cross um, is a one-time event for salvation. Um, you know, that was the whole point of the book of Hebrews. And, um, you know, um, they were saying, hey, you know, um, rest in his finished work. Don't go back to, you know, um, the works of the law and re-crucify uh, Christ just like, um, you know, the priests, the Catholic priests do at Mass. You know, rest in his finished work. Um, his sufficiency um, is enough. You know, what he did for us is enough. And... Um, you know, but again, a workspace salvation is um, um, part of orthodoxy. Jehovah's Witness is about eight million strong, and you know they have the uh, kingdom theology and the 144,000 uh, very weird interpretation of the Book of Revelation. Um, but they use their own Bibles. Uh, taking out key verses, placing Jehovah in a lot of places to further uh, their false teaching. Um, but in short, it is a works-based salvation uh, doctrine and one that uh, people should avoid. And uh, luckily, most see through uh, this pretty easily when uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses come proselytizing at people's door. Uh, Mormons are about twice as strong, 15 million. Um, and this is another um, cult that was began in the 1800s. Um, uh, Joseph Smith supposedly had a revelation, uh, the Book of Mormon, um, and it really twists God's Word, uh, adds to God, God's Word with other inspired books of the Bible. If you see a religion that has uh, or uses another holy book besides the Bible, or they call it holy, and uses it for key doctrine, especially from a salvation standpoint, uh, then definitely avoid that um, church. And, you know, uh, with Mormonism, a great example of this, they uh, believe in having to uh, be baptized, to repent of sins. Um, you know, it's a um, grace plus works salvation. 
and they have to do a lot of rituals within the Mormon temple um, to continue and reach a higher uh, state of heaven and salvation. Uh, ultimately, they become their own gods, have spirit babies, um, and if you continue um, to look at that, the beliefs get weirder and weirder. Um, another um, church that came about in the 1800s, Seventh-day Adventist. Um, you know, again, this is one of those subtle uh, works-based salvation where they'll say it's by grace. Um, but then you must abide in Christ. And to abide in Christ, you must, um, you know, do the things that that church says, which is, you know, obviously observe the Sabbath, um, you know, and other other of those types of, um, of of works. You know, none of um, these works-based salvation um, doctrines. There's no security. There's no eternal security. You're you're not assured. You're never assured uh, of salvation because. Uh, you never know if your efforts are good enough in the eyes of God. Uh, you're placing your faith in yourself. You're taking your eyes off what Jesus Christ did, and you're looking at what you do. Um, and sometimes you can um, feel pretty good about yourself, and other times you may not feel so good. Um, you know, and and um, your faith will. Um, wax and wane dependent on um, you know your human efforts and um, and some days you'll feel that you know you're you're doing really well and you'll look at others and judge others and compare yourself to other people and say hey I'm I've been going to church more than this person has I'm you know I'm feeding the poor and uh, you know, I was nice to all my co-workers. I, I know I'm going to heaven. Then you'll have a bad day and wonder. Um, you know, Pentecostals, just the same. I came from a church of Christ that, you know, had a five-step gospel. Of hear the word of God. Believe and amen and amen to that. Um, confess. But then... Um, you know, the workspace salvation starts creeping in. You know, you have to be water baptized to go to heaven. You have to repent of your sins to go to heaven. Um, and, you know, I think some people within, whether it's in, you know, the Pentecostal churches or other churches, you know, even Seventh-day Adventists, uh, they understand that repent of sins may, may just be, um, you know, acknowledgement of sin. But if they think they have to give up their sins, uh, and that's a requirement for salvation that they need to keep the commandments of God, obey God's commandments, um, his commandments of doing stuff and his commandments of not doing stuff, then, you know, you're putting your trust in yourself and those are works. Um, you know, repenting of sins, true, repenting of sins, turning from sin is a work. Um, as we, you know, we've gone through multiple times through, throughout, you know, my videos, but, um, you know, whether it's Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, um, you know, any of the Pentecostal churches, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist, um, you know, I'm not, not just picking on those or orthodoxy or, or Catholicism, you know, there's a lot of um, Protestant churches that, um, you know, workspace salvation, um, has crept back in, you know, they, um, the reformers left the Catholic church, uh, because of that teaching that it was false. Um, but you know, they've kept a lot of the Catholic, uh, liturgy within their, um, within their worship service, whether it's sprinkling babies or, or whatnot. Um, you know, and, and then over time, if you get away from, you know, the Bible, then, you know, 
Uh, for instance, you know, there's some Methodists I know that think that you can lose your salvation. Um, you know, and I think if you truly look at uh, what Methodism teaches, you know, they don't most most of the pastors don't talk about it. Um, but I think that's what it teaches. Uh, and that's false, you know, and, and that's what um, a lot of these um, churches that I've talked about believe, you know, Seventh-day Adventists believe that. Um, Church of Christ, Pentecostals, they believe that. Um, you know, Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, they believe that to an extent, whether it's you can completely... Uh, lose salvation or you're going to purgatory or um, finish um, your theosis um, for an extended period of time you again all of this in one you know simple phrase is you're putting your focus on yourself and what you're doing and not what Jesus Christ has done um, so if you're in any of these, quote, Christian churches, uh, and I use that term pretty loosely because I wouldn't consider Jehovah's Witness or Mormonism uh, even part of um, the Christian faith at all. Um, the beliefs are so bizarre. But if you are in any one of these churches, this is to focus you on the truths of the Bible, on Jesus Christ, and his finished work on the cross, that it's by God's grace, faith in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. You know, I think a lot of uh, people that have been um, misled in these uh, churches look at the cross as simply a conduit that has been opened so that that person can now have the chance for eternal life uh, if they obey God and keep his commandments and do good deeds and good works, that that's uh, sort of the avenue that, yeah, belief and faith is important, uh, but that's simply just the avenue and you have to, um, you know, go down that hard road, that long process uh, of persevering and and uh, proving your faith and having obedient faith in order to receive salvation, um, but that's completely false. Um, it is not a process as we discuss, um, and simply placing your faith in Jesus Christ, uh, you're spiritually reborn. Let's go through uh, just a few verses, and you know there's so many verses. Um, you know, we could, we could literally read two hours at least on verses that show that it's salvation, receiving eternal life through Jesus Christ alone and not of works. Um, but let's just go through a few, um, Galatians, for instance, you, the whole book is, is on, um, you know, um, the gospel message and not to receive another gospel which is not another and a cursed gospel a worse based gospel um galatians 2 16 knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of jesus christ even we have believed in jesus christ that we might be justified by the faith of christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified um romans 3 20, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. So it's not our righteousness 
that gets us to heaven. It's his righteousness. And it's not our just deeds that gets us there, but it's that he is perfect and just and justifies us, gives us his righteousness, imputes his righteousness to us on our behalf through faith uh, and faith alone. Titus 3, uh, verse 4 through 7, But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, it's a free gift. It's not of works. You can't do anything to earn it. Um, doing so, you'll be able to boast about it, but not before God. Um, God knows our hearts, and he doesn't require our efforts. Um, all our efforts and righteousnesses are as filthy rags according to his holiness. And if we think that we have to uh, contribute our meager righteousness to God and Jesus Christ's perfect righteousness, then we're deceived. Um, it says in Romans eleven six, and if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. So as you can see, if you mix grace and works, then it cancels God's grace. And you're under the law. And you have to fulfill the whole law. And nobody can do that. That's why it was given uh, to show man that we couldn't fulfill the law. Um, it was our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, the only person that could because he was God in the flesh. Um, and, you know, in Romans 4, I think a lot of um, a works-based salvation, they'll immediately go to James 2. And, you know, just for, um, you know, sort of a, a rule of thumb, when reading the Bible, if there is a uh, hundred or so verses that are very clear on a topic and then there's one or two that uh, seem to contradict those hundred to two hundred clear verses, then you're probably just not reading um, the one or two verses um, that seem to be contradicting um, properly. And there is no errors in the Bible. There's no contradictions. Um, so if you look at James 2, um, where it talks about um, being justified by works, it's not before God. And it shows the example of Abraham. And, you know, if you just go back earlier in the book of Romans, um, it completely explains this. And uh, then you read James in context and <laughs> you see this, um, what it what it's talking about. Uh, but let's just go to Romans 4, verses 1 through 5 uh, first. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as paternity to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So if Abraham were justified by his works, then he could glory, but not before God. Why? Because it's talking about justification in the eyes of men. That's what James 2 is talking about. Uh, being justified in the eyes of men, not of God. Um, continuing in verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. And we just saw that in Romans eleven six. 6. Um, if you're working and mixing works with grace then it's no longer grace. It's of debt. Um, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Um, 
just like Abraham. His faith was counted for righteousness. That's how Abraham obtained eternal life, through faith, not of works. Um, so don't get confused on that. And um, I'll finish up the video here. Uh, again, we could go to a ton of other verses, but we'll keep it, um, you know, 25 minutes, probably too long anyway. Uh, so just to summarize and wrap this video up, um, you know, there's, there is works-based salvation, not only outside of Christianity, but within Christianity. And as Christians, uh, we should contend for the faith, the, the true faith, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, our efforts, uh, no matter how grandiose they may be, contribute nothing to our salvation. Uh, and it's very clear in the Bible. Um, we are made to do good works and to go on unto good works, but without the spiritual rebirth, um, those are dead works. And, you know, uh, we must first put our faith in Jesus Christ, then go on unto good works. Uh, of course, we should do uh, good works that are profitable for man uh, and that are pleasing to God in our flesh. We're commanded to do that. But we um, shouldn't put the cart before the horse. Uh, if you do, then you're not going to have that spiritual rebirth because you're mixing works and grace. And um, there's no assurance in that. And, um, you know, it can be arduous sometimes um, trying to, um, you know, work your way to heaven or prove um, your salvation. And uh, once again, you don't need to prove anything to God. He sees your heart. Um, just rest in his finished work. If you're trying to prove something, you know, something to somebody, if it's not of yourself, um, you know, or to others, then who are you proving it to? You're not, you don't need to prove it to God. He sees your heart. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good people, uh, quote, good people in this world that are doing a lot of good things. But again, being a quote, good person doesn't get you to heaven. Because there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, we've all come short of the glory of God. Um, and the wages of sin are death. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So um, don't trust in your goodness. Uh, trust in Jesus Christ and his goodness and his righteousness and perfectness. Uh, you have to be perfect to go to heaven. And nobody's perfect. Uh, therefore, we must obtain Christ's perfectness, his righteousness. Um, and by being um, imputed his righteousness, that is the only way to come in the presence of God. Um, you know, God is a loving God, of course, for God so loved the world. And we went over some videos uh, about that. But to receive that love, it's through Jesus Christ. And... God is a just God, a holy God, and God's in a consuming fire. Um, and so, you know, we must be baptized in Christ um, through faith, um, or we're baptized with fire. And, um, you know, that's a place that nobody wants to be, whether you're um, an atheist or... Uh, another religion or within um, uh, Christianity, one of the many, many branches of Christianity, it all boils down to faith in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, again, like I said, there's um, two types of people in this world. There's believers and non-believers in Jesus Christ. That's um, what, um, you know, that's what God sees. And, um, you know, we're all sinners and the amount of sins um, isn't what gets us to heaven or keeps us out of heaven. Um, 
but it's by faith in Jesus Christ. And so if you're a sinner and acknowledge that you're a sinner and need a Savior, uh, if you have been deceived by um, some false teachings, you know, workspace teachings uh, within Christianity or, or outside of Christianity, um, or atheism, uh, and have been deceived by uh, the false prophets of the science community, um, you know, hopefully this video will help and, and open your eyes and, again, um, either plant a seed or, you know, that seed's already been planted to, to water it, to make it grow so that uh, you can come to uh, the acknowledgement of the truth. And, again, this is what this is all about. It's about truth, um, seeking truth, and, and that truth is in Jesus Christ. Uh, so God bless.